There's a reason it's called long in the tooth. Horses' teeth, up to 44 in all, take up more space in their head than their brain, and they continue to erupt from the gum line for most of their lives, getting longer unless they are ground down naturally or filed. So floating teeth, it, it's actually it's a term that comes from masonry way back in the day where uh, floating actually meant to level off. Uh, so we're actually going through and we're looking for enamel points, essentially sharp places on a horse's teeth that need to be filed down because it's creating uh, lacerations to the cheeks or the tongue or something like that. She does have some enamel points. The partner's first task, using a power tool with a rasp attachment to float or file down a horse's sharp teeth. And a number of these tools are actually exactly the same tools that you would use in human dentistry but because it's a horse, of course, they're uh, significantly larger. Domestic horses often don't get enough grinding action because of the types of feed they're given. The teeth wear down unevenly, causing hooks and points that can cut the gums and cheeks, causing pain. It's interesting working with Sinjin on this rotation because he definitely dives in to anything that deals with veterinary medicine. Not too many people could do what Sinjin is doing. I know, he has impeccable time. If he has to get low in order to do something, he's going to get low. <laughs> God, Sinjin. Do you want me to get you a seat? She could help you too. Nah, because she's just going to move around. Okay. So I tend to get this quite large uh, warrior stance, I suppose some people call it. But I'm sort of, I'm trying to start early, especially while I'm in shape now, to try and keep my back intact. So I'd like to still be practicing, you know, when I'm 70, 80 years old.